salvation. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. We'll read a portion of Psalm 116. We'll read it uh, responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. In the courts of the Lord's house, 
in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also. After supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant, covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, Judas son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, 
not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know that what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, why I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Amen. I was going to try to stand at the music stand, but I didn't get a microphone, so now I'm here in the pulpit, if that's okay. <laughs> All right. Is it possible that some of you are a little shaky and have mixed feelings about tonight's foot washing? I have a history of stigma with my feet. Do you like the looks of your feet? The lock-in group, I wanted to ask if we have lock-in teens. I think we have a few. Did your mom ever tell you that your feet stink? <laughs> Did any of you have a pedicure for in preparation for tonight? I did. I also warned the pedicurist who was preparing the warm water, do not be surprised, I have six toes. Yes, I was born with an extra toe. When I started to go to the swimming pool on my own, kids would tease me about my toes. So why in the world would I want to have my feet washed tonight? Well, it's Monday, Thursday. And we sit together in a very special time, like at the Last Supper, washing one another's feet in the spirit of loving service that Jesus modeled for us as a servant to the disciples. Reverend Christine Lee, a priest at St. Peter's Chelsea in New York, put it so well. What God wants is a heart that's broken open that can allow the seeds of peace and forgiveness to enter in 
So the fruits of the Spirit can be born out of this. If you take one thing home from this sermon, it is this. Remember, Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Look at that. It's in big letters, St. John's in the wilderness. And I'm going to say that four more times, and I expect you all to say it with me. So you'll memorize it, and that's the one thing you'll take home. There have been other foot washings that I remember. One was Pope Francis. Do you remember when Pope Francis washed the feet of prisoners? It was remarkable. He was their servant. And I also remember foot washings back in the 80s at the Salvation Army where several of us public health nurses cared for boot rot and foot ulcers of the homeless people at the Salvation Army shelter. When they got up to leave, they looked at us with such caring as if no one had touched them for a long time. It seemed like they were the untouchables. They left with clean socks and feeling loved. Remember, together now, Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Good. Tonight's gospel is pretty straightforward on the face of it. This is the beginning of the last days of Jesus' life. He knew his death was coming. He was trying to teach his best friends at the table what was important to remember. The problem was they were not picking up on the message. Jesus said, so if I, your teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. For I am giving you an example to follow. Was this the very first foot washing? Not at all. In the first century, slaves would wash everyone's feet when they came as a guest to a house because everyone wore sandals and everyone's feet would be very dusty. And it's also not the first foot washing in St. John's Gospel. Four nights before this Last Supper, Mary Magdalene, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, took a huge chunk of expensive oily nard, which was a perfume, and wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. In Luke, there's a scene where a woman bathed Jesus' feet with her tears. Was Jesus moved by these acts of caring? I think so. Clearly, foot washing is a sign of humility. What is so remarkable about this act is that Jesus is the master, our God and shepherd, and he acts like a slave or a servant. He kneels down and washes these feet as a symbolic lesson in his final time with his disciples. We must look at the darkness around us and admit our feet are ugly and full of hurts. What is your need tonight for reconciliation? Your feet are probably in need of healing with water and touch. When we get honest about our pain, we can experience the joy of Easter and the light of forgiveness. Remember, Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. When you think about this night before Jesus is arrested, who in the room do you relate to? Do you relate to Mary Magdalene? She clearly knew what was going to happen, and she was full of grief. Are you full of grief? 
Or maybe you feel more like Peter Simon, who said, you will never wash my feet. Peter said, did not, like Peter, do we deny any need for healing. And maybe we have a bit of Judas in our soul, always thinking about himself rather than others. Judas told his soldiers, after being paid a lot of money, to arrest the one that he would kiss. And they did. Judas felt the power. Remember, Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. In this week's newsletter from the bishop, the bishop gives us such wise closing words about this evening. Holy Week is not particularly popular. It demands something that is hard for us. It asks us to come face to face with the pain in our own hearts and lives. The suffering in the world and the systemic sins in which we participate and are complicit. It hurts to do that. But here's the deal about tonight. Unless we sit with Jesus in the depths of the real pain and loss that being human inevitably, inevitably involves, then Easter joy really is a mere anesthetic, a facade of wishful thinking, and another distraction. As we walk the way of the cross with Jesus for another year, may we see our own and other sufferings wide-eyed and sober, not as one without hope, but as people who know that the power of Jesus has set us free. And remember, Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Amen. Jesus set an example for the disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. Therefore, I invite you to come forward. As your feet are washed, remember that strength and growth in God's reign come by lowly service such as this. If you're unable to wash the feet of the person who comes after you, someone will take your place. So please come forward.
the night, we dine together as the body of Christ, and at the table commit ourselves to love and serve one another. On this holy night, then, let us pray for the church and all humankind. God, our provider, you feed us with the bread of life and lift for us the cup of salvation. On this night, Jesus gave us this holy feast. May all who gather at your table receive a foretaste of the eternal banquet. God of love, Grant our prayer. Servant God, on this night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. May we follow this example of love and service. God of love, Grant our prayer. God of compassion, on this night Jesus prayed for those who would believe through the message of the disciples. May all who gather on this day so live what they proclaim that all may come to know your saving love. God of love, Grant our prayer. God of renewal, on this day oil was consecrated for the use in baptism and healing. We pray for all who will be anointed with these holy oils, for the sick and for those preparing for baptism. God of love, God our companion, we pray for those unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, for those who betray and for those betrayed, and for all innocent victims. God of love, God of hope, remember all those in need, especially those we silently or aloud hold before you now. For Paul and Patty, for those suffering from gun violence, for those who are experiencing homelessness and hunger. God of love, Grant our prayers. Holy God, you give us this meal of bread and wine in which we celebrate your great compassion. Grant that we may work with you to fulfill our prayers and to love and serve others as Christ has loved us. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, upholding your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness to each other, in ourselves, and in the world of humanity. We repent of the evil that destroys us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. service. Usually these services midweek are not super well attended because we're not used to coming to church on, on uh, midweek, but thank you for being here. This is fantastic, and thanks to all who've put a lot of work into 
not only this service, but all the Holy Week services this week, and particularly the Altar Guild, who is on double, triple duty uh, tonight and always. But thank you guys so much for everything that you do throughout the year. Um, behind the scenes, um, absolutely, we cannot be this church without you. So thank you so much for all of that. And to the choir for the lovely singing tonight, thank you so much, and, and everybody else who is um, putting so much work into this. If you'll notice, the bulletin is a little thicker than it usually is, and that is because we have tonight's service, Good Friday service, and the Easter vigil service all in one. The reason we do that is that it's all one service. You'll notice there won't be a dismissal tonight because it's this ongoing service, actually. So what that means is you can take it, but only if you promise to come back tomorrow and then to the Easter Vigil the next day. Um, so actually we do, at the end of the service, if you could leave that um, for the next folks who will come tomorrow. So our services um, after tonight will be um, at noon tomorrow for Good Friday and then 7 p.m. tomorrow. And then we have the Easter Vigil at 7 p.m. on Saturday night and then regular service times at 8 and 10 on, on Easter morning. And there'll be a baptism at the 10 o'clock service. Um, and in addition to that, on Friday and Saturday, we have two little other services, if that weren't enough. We have two other little services that you can check out online at the three o'clock hour on Good Friday to mark the, the time when Jesus died. Um, and then at nine o'clock on Saturday morning will be another very small service just to note a time of kind of that waiting time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And so we say some, we call that prayers at the tomb. So you can check that out as well. All that is on uh, the website and e-news and all those other regular places. So thanks so much for being here tonight. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The table of bread and wine is not now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all those who love him. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites all of us to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Almighty God, source of all love, whose only begotten Son, on the night of his betrayal, gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others, as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Savior of the world in the Garden of Gethsemane, you submitted to the Father's will. Look mercifully upon our weak and wayward lives and arm us with such strength and courage that we may tread without fear the appointed path of duty to evermore follow the patterns of your costly obedience. For your honor and glory, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And then he said to them, I am deeply, deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Your, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <laughs> 